Module three, managing thoughts and feelings. In this module, we're going to look a little bit more at those negative thoughts and feelings that may come up when we're stressed around exams and how to keep them at more of a manageable level. First, we're going to talk about positive self-talk. We know from the previous slides that if we're experiencing stress and anxiety, we'll often have those negative thoughts that are going through our head. And those can often be quite critical about ourselves. And we often underestimate how we're going to do. So positive self-talk is trying to combat that. And it's a really useful tool that involves saying to yourself or aloud statements that encourage you. So rather than being critical, they're more helpful, encouraging words you can say to yourself. And this can help you see through those difficult or stressful experiences. And research shows that actually when we're doing this positive self-talk, we need at least two or three statements we can say to ourselves to combat just one of the negative thoughts that we have. And so when doing this, it can be really helpful to think about words of encouragement that you've heard before, maybe even things that someone else has said to you that just got you through that moment. It's also really helpful just to think back about any times where you've managed a difficult situation or stress in the past. So you're using kind of positive past experiences to help you through. So these words of um, positive self-talk may be very personal to you, but the general idea is having a few sentences that you can say to yourself when you're going through that stressful period to combat that negative self-talk. And it can be really helpful to write these statements down. So you may use some cue cards or revision cards just to write a few of these statements down around positive self-talk. And also it can be really useful to do this when you're actually in a state where you're not too worried or stressed. So when you're feeling a little bit more positive about yourself, because this means that when you are getting more stressed or anxious, you can pull them out and remind yourself of them. So it can be important to have a pause and think about some of those more positive coping statements you have. So it could be things like, I can do this, I've coped or I've managed well in the past. And these are just some examples of some of the positive self-talk statements that you may come up with. So they can be quite short, quite to the point, um, but the important thing is that they're meaningful for you and that they will make a bit of a difference to you. So these are some things that you can think about. We're also going to talk through some formal relaxation methods. So we talked before about how stress and anxiety can build and also physically affect our body. So these techniques are gonna look at how to manage that kind of physical feeling of emotion and how to lower it a little bit. Some people may have heard of something called mindfulness. And this can be really helpful practice to managing negative emotions or experiences. So mindfulness is about accepting thoughts. So just noticing and accepting any kind of thoughts, feelings or sensations that we're having. And not judging them or getting too caught up in them and focusing on the present moment with complete awareness. And mindfulness is quite a general term and there's lots of different things that can come under this that can be helpful. And the reason why mindfulness can help manage these difficult feelings or emotions is because it gets us off from thinking about all of the past things that may have happened. It maybe stops us thinking too much in the future and really concentrates us on the present moment and just having that open and aware attitude. 
So I'm just going to go through two mindfulness type exercises that can be really helpful and people sometimes do use when trying to manage exam related stress. So one of them is um, what's known as a grounding exercise and is called the five senses activity. So this exercise involves focusing on your senses. So what it's doing in line with mindfulness is it's bringing your attention to the present moment, just noticing and, and being open to what's in your present moment. So it goes through each five sense. So first in this activity, you need to focus on what you can see. And this activity can be done anywhere. So it may be done in the classroom. It may be done when you're at home before school. It may be done on your walk to school. So you may notice what you can see. So notice any objects. You may notice the colours of objects. You may notice the different shades of colours. So really taking your time to notice everything that you can see just kind of do this exercise in your head and describe it and once you feel like you finish with that you move to the next sense so what you can hear so you're just switching your attention and really focusing on the sounds that you can hear in your environment you may notice lots of different sounds you may just be focusing on one main sound and noticing the volume or the pitch after that, you may notice what you feel or what you can touch. So it may be how your body is making contact with the ground. It may be that you pick up an object and touch it and notice the sensations that you can feel. After doing this sense, you can move to smell. So what you can smell in the room. If you can't smell anything, you may need to move. For example, if you're outside, you could um, smell a flower or a tree that you go by and if you really can't smell anything sometimes you can just try and um, bring a memory of a smell or a particular scent and lastly taste so again if you can notice anything that you can taste maybe that you can still taste your toothpaste from the morning it could be anything and if you can't come up with something again finding a memory of a taste so the idea is to go through each sense one at a time until you can't come up with anything else. And so this activity doesn't have to take too long. It's just drawing you back to the present moment. Um, and it is just one of the ways that you can get out of that anxiety cycle when it's going round. Breathing exercises can also be helpful. And often people find their own breathing exercise and rhythm that helps for them. But we know that when we're feeling stressed or anxious, our breathing can change. So this exercise not only brings us back to the present moment, but can also just balance out that breathing a bit more. And the important thing to do when you're doing a breathing exercise is just to do it slowly, gradually, but also deeply. So we want to be breathing in down to our belly and out again. And when you're doing a breathing exercise, just focus your mind on the breathing and the sensation. And you may notice um, your counts of breath as you breathe in and as you breathe out. So one example of a breathing exercise people may do is just breathing in for four seconds and breathing out for six seconds. So often it can be helpful just to breathe out a little bit longer than you're breathing in. And again, this is an activity you can do quite quickly, quite briefly. So this may be one that you learn to do before taking an exam, for example, just doing some slow breaths in and out until you notice your breathing rhythm becomes a bit more balanced. And again, if you're focusing your mind on that breathing, then you're getting out of that trap slightly and just lowering those physical sensations you can get with anxiety. And for all of these exercises, it's really helpful to have a real good practice of them and play around with them to find how it can work for you um, before going into the exam or before your stress becomes too high.
So if we can practice them when our stress or anxiety is a little bit lower, then we're more able to use them when we really do need it. So practice does help. And just to note, there's loads and loads of exercises on YouTube and in apps that you can find on mindfulness, breathing exercises and this five senses activity. So if you need a bit more support or guidance, I would recommend looking at that. So these are all examples of more kind of formal relaxation you can do to help manage those emotions and physical sensations. Now we're going to talk about more informal relaxation that's also really important to integrate into your life, um, even when kind of doing your re revision and exams, um, planning in time just to have brief moments of informal relaxation, because it's all about getting that balance. So informal relaxation is generally doing things that are important or enjoyable to you. And that can mean different things to different people. So it may be seeing a, a friend, talking to family. It may be spending time with your pets, reading a book, going on Xbox, um, or even just watching an episode of something that makes you laugh. So it can be helpful just to note down some ideas of things that you know are kind of helpful to you, things that you enjoy. Uh, things that are important to you. So it may be that you're part of a football club and going to football is really important to you. You may be someone that finds it really helpful to relax in the bath before bed. So just notice, noticing all those things that are important and helpful to you and having them written down. And then when you're doing that revision timetable and plan, you can kind of plan in if you're going to have a half an hour break at some point, is there something you can do in that half an hour break that you really enjoy? So using those breaks um, really well and doing those things that are important to you. So at this point, you may want to pause again just to think about those ideas and how you would plan them and integrate them into that revision timetable. <laughs> 